Hi, welcome back to our CHM YouTube channel. Thank you all so much for joining us here each and every week. We're so glad to be back uh, in the flow of sending you the videos weekly. It's a privilege, an honor, and, and it's exciting to be able to do that. So thank you all for joining us. If this is your first time, then we say welcome to our CHM YouTube channel, which is also called Wednesday's Word. And it's an opportunity the Lord has given us for we actually share his heart to you each and every Wednesday, um, just sharing whatever word he gives us to share with you. So if you, we believe that if you are here, that it's a divine appointment, whatever God has given me today to share with you is going to be a blessing, not only to you, but to someone that you may know. So with that in mind, we ask that you will please make sure that you like, comment and share. Be sure to, uh, and subscribe. Yeah, do that. If you're watching and this blesses you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well so you can be a part of what God is doing here at our Wednesday's Word. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and actually get started. We have a few announcements first. So we're going to start with those again. Um, just to remind you of August the 26th, which is our next Worship and Word gathering. And as I said last week, it will be actually a special youth edition of the Worship and Word Gathering. I'm super excited about that. Um, I think I shared with you before that this is actually something God put on my heart about a year ago. And so we've been just planning and praying and preparing through it and now it's here. So we're excited about that. Um, our youth pastor at City Church in Memphis, uh, Pastor A.T. Gatlin, he will be bringing the word that night. So we're excited about that. And Jayla Tate, as you know, who's actually been bringing, leading us in worship all this year at the Worship and Word Gatherings. And so you're familiar with her, if you're at all familiar with, uh, with our Worship and Word Gatherings. She's going to be leading the worship. They both are volunteers. Well, she's a volunteer with our youth. Pastor A.T. is the pastor for our youth at City Church. So we're excited. And we are inviting not just the youth and the young adults, but we're inviting parents, grandparents. Actually, let's just make it a family gathering. There will be special emphasis for the youth. And the young adults, uh, we'll have a pizza party starting at 6.30 for them. There will be some games and fun activities for them as well before the service starts at 7. So, uh, again, that's August the 26th, 7 o'clock p.m. at City Church Memphis. So, make sure you mark your calendars and come out and join us there. And then in September, September 30th through October the 1st, I will actually be ministering at a women's retreat. The retreat is Amen for Women's Women Retreat. That's kind of hard to say. Amen for Women is the ministry, and it's their annual women's retreat. And I'm excited about that opportunity. Um, if you're interested in joining us, it is an overnight retreat, so you have that as an option. You can come that Friday and be with us overnight Friday throughout the day on Saturday. Um, if perhaps you only want to come out and be there on that Saturday, um, there's a different fee scale for that. Uh, and it starts at like nine o'clock, starts with breakfast that day. And that's a different fee scale. That information will be in the flyer that's attached here. So you can get that information as well. I'll be speaking at one o'clock PM on Saturday. So we're inviting you all to come out and be a part of that. And lastly, um, if you would like to have me come and minister to your church, to your women's ministry, um, to your Bible study or whether via Zoom or in person. If you want me to come out, please make sure that you contact me at my email address. And that's sinhortmen at gmail.com. Again, that's C-Y-N-H-O-R-T-M-I-N at gmail.com. And I will be more than happy to come out and minister the word of God to you at your church or through via Zoom or Facebook. So make sure you do that. And I believe that's all of our announcements. So we're going to go ahead and get started in our word for today. Um, last week we talked about that God will rebuke the devourer for our sake. And as we um, finished that up, God began to just deal with my heart even more that he wanted us to go a little deeper um, into exactly what that looks like. And so he put it on my heart to begin to share a couple of places or a few, I don't know how many, we're definitely doing it today and possibly next week as well, looking at actual places in the scripture where God showed up to fight for his people. Because we need to know it's not just something that we say, but it is a reality that we experience where God shows up and literally fights on behalf of his people. So last week we talked about the fact that God rebukes a devourer um, for our sake. 
And we know that rebuke, as we say, it means reprove and it means to restrain. It means reprove, which is to scold or to correct. And it means to restrain, which is to prevent something from happening or to limit the scope of what a person is able to do. And so we know God is all powerful. Satan has power. We're not pretending that he doesn't. But what he is not is all powerful. Our God is the omnipotent one. And all power really is in his hand and under his control. And when he sees fit, he will yank Satan's chain and keep him from doing the very thing that he sets out to do. And so I'm excited just to even talk about that. We said last week um, that what, re what rebuke and what scandal, I mean, what scold me. But as we were looking at it, as I looked at it this week, God was showing me that word devourer means the one that eats, the eater, the one that consumes. And it's, it's actually referring to something like a locust or a caterpillar, something that actually devours something. And it made me think about um, Joel chapter two, verse 25. We, had a, we talked about this uh, earlier this year. When we talked about God saying, I will restore the years. He said, I'll restore the years that the locusts have destroyed. And I said to you all last week, we know we have a harvest coming up. Because the locusts, the enemy, the devourer is rearing his ugly head. And when he begins to show up, don't be so distracted by him. But let the fact that he shows up be an indication to you that there's a harvest somewhere that he wants to devour. And so that... Um, that word devour means like that a locust or um, a caterpillar or like the scripture said, the creeping locust, the hopping locust, the, um, the crawling locust, the devour in any form that he may show up. You know, when God told them that in Joel chapter two, he was talking to his people who actually lived an agricultural lifestyle. That was how they lived. They lived off the land and whatever they could produce, whatever they could sell and, and consume from their land. And so the locust showing up was a pretty big deal because no matter how no matter how bountiful their crops may have been, when the locust showed up, he would the locusts would wipe it away and leave nothing behind. And so that kind of gives us a picture of what the enemy wants to do for us. Now for them they had actual crops of grapes, of uh, olives and even grain. And the, the enemy, could, the locusts could come in and destroy them. But for us, what it means for us as spiritual um, believers in God, there's a spiritual harvest that the enemy wants to come in and devour in our life as well. Our harvest may manifest, while it may not be grapes and olives and grain, it may show up in just having perfect health and having a healthy body. It may show up in having um, uh, financial blessings. It may show up in uh, restoring marital relationships or family relationships. Um, God can give us bountiful blessings in numerous ways. You know, we talked about the abundance of rain. We talked about that a few months back in the spring. And that those bountiful rains was significant and symbolic of the blessings that God was pouring out on his people. And you know, as he told us a few months ago that now we are going to see those blessings. Well, how many of you have looked around your life and said, this stuff I see don't look anything like a blessing. It don't look like a harvest. It looks like a straight out attack from the enemy. You know why? Because that's exactly what it is. When the enemy shows up, he only shows up to consume and destroy. Remember, we said last week that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. And so you may look around your life, your circumstances, and feel like this don't look like a blessing. And that's only because the devourer has shown up which is why God has given me this word to share with you today, to know that no matter how the enemy rears his ugly head, God is fighting for his people. And what he brought to my mind, Psalm 91 and verse 11, and I'm reading this from the Passion Translation, but it shows us one of the ways that God fights for his people. And it says that um, God sends angels with special orders to follow us and to be with us wherever we go. They are to defend us from all harm. Again, that's Psalm 91 and verse 11. God sends angels and they have special orders to protect us wherever we go, defending us from all harm. Now, I know your circumstance may not look like that you have protection or defender, but you do. Because I can assure you, if you are alive, if you have health and strength, if you have food, clothing, and shelter, God, angels are on their job because the enemy, remember, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so 
With that in mind, God lets us know that angels are a part of his defense. It's a part of the way that he fights for us. He sends angels with special orders. And he took me to Exodus chapter 14. And in chapter 14, from starting at verse 1, it really looked like God had purposely sent his people and put them in a trap. This is after they uh, had they had gotten out of Egypt. Finally, God had put so many, so many plagues on Pharaoh and so much pressure on him that he uh, began, he finally acquiesced and agreed to allow the children of Israel to go free. They went free. They left with all of the wealth of Egypt and they were on this journey to freedom. And they got to a certain point where the Red Sea was in front of them because God had told Moses to tell the children of Israel, tell them to turn around, he said, and make their camp between Migdal and Zephon. And the Red Sea was right there. He purposely sent them that they were hemmed up between the Red Sea. And then they looked back and Pharaoh's army is coming behind them. For some reason, Pharaoh's heart got hardened after he realized they were gone. He's like, what in the world have I done? I'm going back to get them. And him and his army came out to try to take God's people back into captivity. So they're standing there with the Red Sea in front of them. They see Pharaoh's army quickly approaching behind them. And they felt like they were trapped. And they felt like something is wrong. This don't look like freedom to me. This don't feel like freedom to me. And so they did what we always do. They began to murmur, grumble, and complain. And they began to whine against Moses. But it really wasn't against Moses. It really was against God. Because God was the one who gave Moses the orders to tell his people to turn around and to camp in a certain place. So that's something to remember too. When you're murmuring and complaining against your leadership, it's not against them, it's against God. Because the Bible said God put all leadership, all authority in position by him. They may not be perfect. You may not like them. You may not even agree with them. But if God has put them in a position of authority and leadership, the best thing you can do is keep your mouth closed and pray for them. Because God puts them in place. Now, that wasn't even in my notes. That's just coming to me out of the Holy Spirit right now. But as they complained against Moses, they were complaining against God. But look what God did. In Exodus chapter 14, um, verse 13 through 14, it says, Moses spoke to the people and he told them, now they're murmuring and complaining and upset with him because they are in their hemmed in by, Mo, by the Red Sea and by their enemy. And so Moses spoke to them. He said, don't be afraid, stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation for you. Not next week, not tomorrow, but today. He says, God is going to do his work of salvation today. So stand firm and see what he does. He says, take a good look at the Egyptians today for you're never going to see them again. He said, God will fight the battle for you. And you, he says, you keep your mouth shut. I'm reading from the Message Bible. That's why it's right in your face. The Message Bible just speak in very clear English and it, in your face kind of language so you can understand. Moses is like, look. Be quiet. Stop complaining. Stop whining. Stop murmuring. God is going to fight this battle for you. And the enemies you see today, you won't see them again anymore forever. But he says, you keep your mouth shut. And then in verse uh, 19 through 20, as it goes on, it says, this is what God did. The angel of God that had been leading the camp of Israel now shifted behind them. So there had been an angel that God had leading them. He was out in front of them, leading them. But then at this particular point, the angel shifted from being in front of them to standing behind them. And it says the pillar of cloud that had been in front of them also shifted to the rear of them. The cloud was now between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. And the cloud enshrouded one camp in darkness and the other camp in light. And then it says the two camps didn't even come near each other all night long. So earlier God had told Moses, why are you crying to me? Lift your, lift your rod. And when Moses lifted the rod over the Red Sea, it opened up and parted and allowed God's people to cross over on dry ground. So the angel of God stood between them and their enemy. The cloud that had been guiding them had been... Um, a shelter over them so they wouldn't get too hot in that 
Egypt desert sun. It was a cloud over them. And all of these are symbolic of who God was for his people. He was an angel guiding them and a cloud covering them. But at this particular time, when God was ready to deal with their enemy, when he was ready to fight the battle himself, he stood between them as an angel and as a cloud. And the cloud put darkness against their enemy and allowed light to shine brightly on their path. God jumped in the middle between them and their enemy. And I want you to know today that's exactly where God is right now. No matter what's happening around you, God is standing between you and between your enemy. And look at what the result was. In verse 24, it says, it was now the morning watch. So the cloud had stood between them all night long and they had the enemies had not even been able to get close to them because they couldn't see. It was dark on their side, but it was light on the side of God's children. So it was now the morning watch. God looked down from the pillar of fire and the cloud on the Egyptian army and he threw them into panic. He caused them to panic. He clogged the wheels of their chariots and they were stuck in the mud. The Egyptians said, listen to this, run from Israel. God is fighting on their side against Egypt. Now, it's something when your enemies recognize that your God is fighting for you. And I want you to know this exactly what God is doing today. It doesn't matter what you're facing. The enemy has shown up. The thief has shown up. The locusts have shown up because there's an abundant harvest of blessings that God got for you. And he's coming in trying to steal, kill, and destroy. But I want you to be at peace and be encouraged because God is fighting this battle. This is where he himself has stood between you and your enemy. Look at verse 30 and 31. This is what we're going to end tonight. And it says, God delivered Israel that day from the oppression of the Egyptians. Israel looked at the Egyptians dead, washed up on the, the shore of the sea, and they realized the tremendous power that God brought against the Egyptians. They finally realized and recognized, not as if he hadn't done many miracles in Egypt to get them out, but they got to the point where they needed another miracle to be reminded of the power that God had. And as this scripture said, he delivered them that very day, just like Moses had declared. And I want you to know today that God is standing between you and whatever your enemies may be. You may look around and feel like your enemies have followed you into your promise land. They're trying to follow you into your place of blessing, into your place of promises fulfilled, into your place of breakthrough. But I want you to be at peace and know that God himself is standing between you and your enemy. He's going to shine light on your path so you can re see where you're going. And he's going to throw your enemy into complete panic and chaos. You be blessed and know that God is fighting for you. Let me pray with you. Father God, today in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are God who is faithful and true. You are the God who fights for your children. God, I thank you that you are in this battle with us right now. You are in the battle fighting, God. Give us the grace, Lord, to stand still and see the salvation that you will bring about, God, on our behalf, even this very day. This day, God, we can look, take a good look at our enemies because we won't see them again anymore. God, you are that angel standing between us and our enemy. You are that cloud that's shrouding our enemy in darkness. God, today we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us is able to prosper. In any tongue that rises up against us, they shall be condemned because this is the heritage, God. For those of us who belong to you, it is our vindication. And God, today we want you to vindicate us, God, for your own righteous namesake, for your own glory, because we, your people, bear your name. And so, God, today we thank you for completely annihilating our enemies, God, and giving us the grace to cross over and to receive the promise and the blessings of biblical restoration, biblical recompense, God, and complete healing and wholeness in every area of our life. And we give you praise and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, thank you all so much for joining us again. Remember August the 26th, the next Worshiping Word Gathering. We love you all. We'll see you back here next week. Shalom.